Good evening and welcome to Estuary TV News. I'm Hugh Riches. I'm joined in the studio a little later by Colette Cunningham of the North Lincolnshire and Gould National Health Trust to have a look at the newspapers. But first, it's over to Emma Lingard for the news headlines. Hello, the headlines today. A new bishop is announced in Grimsby. Grimsby's Salvation Army Hostel is here to stay and NHS staff join in a more caring, positive approach. Controversial paving slabs in Grimsby are being relayed after only a few months since work was completed. The slabs have become unsafe for pedestrians after they lifted. The local authorities say this was due to weather conditions. As a result, Bethlehem Street will be closed, although vehicles will still be able to access the train station. The new Bishop of Grimsby is looking forward to his work in the area when he commences the post in September. David Court is currently Vicar of Cromer in Norfolk, but in his new role will have the strategic leadership position across the whole of Lincolnshire. He'll not only look after North East Lincolnshire, but also across Lincolnshire to Stamford. I'm hugely looking forward to just to meeting people. Uh, new area, I know a little bit, but I'm meeting people, learning from them. Uh, I'm looking forward to working out how I can serve the community here in Grimsby. Uh, and I guess my main job is just to serve the church here and to work with those who are in the church to see it become all that it should be so that we can serve uh, the communities we're set in. There's still a need for the Salvation Army in Grimsby, that's according to manager Neil Stamp, following a successful open event at the Booth Lighthouse. The £5.2 million facility, which has 35 bedrooms for men and women over the age of 25, has been busy since it opened two years ago. There's a lot of hustle and bustle today with people visiting for the first time or whatever, but it's usually a very calm um, atmosphere here. We like to keep it that way because when people first come to us, they're in crisis. Um, some people have either just been evicted or thrown out of their, their family homes or whatever, or they've spent some time on the streets, they're confused, worried, anxious. Uh, so we like to give a calm and supportive atmosphere throughout the, throughout the centre for them. The former resident Paul Townsend, the Life House, was a lifeline when he moved to the area from the south and it's helped him turn his life around. So I used to live in London and actually, and actually something like this was non-existent. So but to, have, to have a service like this for people like myself, it is, it is quite a vital service for, for people. Not, not just my situation but also other, other issues that people that have had in their life, they need to rebuild their life, they need to get structure, and this is quite a good base to start from. Staff at Northern Lincolnshire and Ghoul Hospitals have launched a new campaign to improve patient confidence by simply introducing themselves. 846 staff from consultants to cleaners have signed up to the nationwide My Name Is campaign, launched by terminally ill patient Kate Granger. Miss Granger had been shocked that not everyone made the effort to tell her their name. Those involved hope going back to basics with something as simple as introducing themselves will put people at ease. I think for patients that are coming into hospital that are vulnerable, um, having somebody come up introduce themselves, when you say what your name is, you automatically smile, uh, which reassures that patient and makes them feel um, as if they're actually meaning something to you and that you've actually taken an interest in what you're going to do and why they're here. Yeah, patients tell me that if I go and ask them how the care is, they'll often say, well, a nurse called Lisa's been looking after me and she's been really good, and they like to refer to them. And um, if they don't know the staff member's name, um, it does seem to cause them more anxiety and things, so it feels much better for them that we, we know each other's names and we're open and relaxed with them. Nurses on the ward are extremely busy, but it doesn't take that long just to step back and remember to introduce yourselves to your patient. It's quite simple. Hello, my name is Debbie. Unwanted seeds are needed by a community group to bring nature to the doors of those without a garden. As part of National Green Week, garden enthusiast Ernie Brown is wanting people to donate packets of vegetable seeds. We have volunteers, got some here behind me, have volunteers and come in and help us. Uh, the afternoon I go out and do talks, this afternoon I'm going out to St Andrew's Hospice to give a talk to them and to show them how to grow runner beans. So it's sort of helping people helping people to grow and helping people to grow things here with us. 
Pupils from Killinghome Primary School visited Phillips 66 as part of a business venture. The youngsters were involved in selling cakes to employees at the South Humber refinery. The money raised will go towards an early years playground in the village. We're really trying to partner with the school and give the kids the opportunity to learn business skills. And uh, this event today is just a great example. It's the first time that they get the chance to take the skills they're learning in a classroom and bring it to the field and, and, and apply. So it's learning through practice. And that's all from me. Bye. Colette Cunningham is the General Manager of the Directorate of Operations uh, for North Lincolnshire and Ghoul National Health Trust. She's been taking a look at the papers and she joins me now. Colette, many thanks for coming in. Welcome. Okay. Just explain, before we took it at the news, uh, General Manager of the Directorate of Operations. That sounds like a, a positively czarist title. Is this operations in the sense of cutting people open? It isn't, no. Um, it's part of the, um, the structure within the organisation. The Directorate of Operations oversees all the operational groups, including medicine, surgery, women's and children's, community and therapies, and central services. Uh, so the Directorate of Operations General Manager has a role to play supporting the Chief Operating Officer um, in supporting all of those groups, all of those me medical groups. So you're running the place, <laughs> that's a bit by the sound of it? Um, not quite. Uh, the Chief Executive, Karen Jackson, runs the place, um, but she's ably assisted by the uh, executive team, of which Karen Griffiths is the Chief Operating Officer. Okay, well I hope that clears that up. Tell me, what, what's the first story that's caught your eye? Um, well, we've got quite an array of stories today, but uh, the first one I was looking at was in Market Raisin uh, Mail regarding the, uh, the shake-up of the um, school meal system. So it's interesting to go back to the days uh, when I was young, when we had a uh, hot meal every day at school. And uh, for me, this is quite important to uh, looking at improving the health of the nation and ensuring that um, the, the, you know, the uh, family units have the best possible start and uh, it improves uh, opportunities for, uh, for everyone and um, if the health of the nation's improved it uh, will prevent some of the admissions to hospital. Well I remember school meals very well and I, I remember them with a sort of Pavlovian response to the smell of overboiled cabbage. Is that what we're going back to when you say hot meals? It's going to be those dreary I horrible, yucky, messy old meals that we used to have when I was at school in the 70s and 80s. I'm pretty sure uh, Jamie Oliver has uh, stamped his mark on uh, the school meal system and um, looking at the, the re actual report, one of the uh, Jamie Oliver's dinner ladies has been visiting uh, to a lay fears just like that. To market raising? To market raising, yes. And it is a big issue because children are unhealthy because they eat badly, they're, they're too fat and they don't get enough exercise. Mm -hmm. And so the, what, what are we doing? Giving them the you know, better protein, vitamins? Uh there, there's a lot of work out in the community around, uh, led by the uh, local councils and the, uh, the local uh, health strategists around uh, improving the health of, of children, uh, down to ec more exercise, encouraging more um, uh, uh, exercise classes and uh, clubs for children to join in. Uh, but it's also about educating the parents uh, and you know, uh, how to produce a really good meal and uh, changing the culture around uh, our meals. Uh, well, from the absolutely delicious to the absolutely revolting, you have a story about Piers Morgan. Yes, um, disappointingly, Piers Morgan reports in the Grimsby Telegraph that he doesn't know where Grimsby is. Um, <laughs> this is after his comments uh, recently that uh, a, a football side that he was interested in was playing no better than Grimsby Town, which rather offended those of us who bear any affection for Grimsby Town. Uh, he's saying that he doesn't know where Grimsby is. It's on a map. Yes, and it's quite disappointing and how I've linked this to, uh, to, to my situation uh, around the health economy is um, we, ha we struggle to recruit to, uh, to Grimsby Hospital um, in all walks of, um, uh, of staffing, staff groups, uh, medics, nursing um, and other uh, health professionals. But once we get them here, once they see the town, once they join the culture uh, of Grimsby, they don't want to leave. So people come and stay for a long time. So we must have something really good here. Well, we do. Uh, but uh, uh, last year, I think it was, the Princess Diana Hospital had to recruit nurses from Spain. Yes, yes, I, uh, I took part in that uh, event and um, we've 
brought uh, quite a, a, a large number of uh, Spanish recruits to, the, to Grimsby. They've settled in really well and the town have made them really welcome. Um, they're excellent nurses, really high skill set and uh, are proving to be an absolute asset to the, uh, the hospital and I'm really proud that they've chosen to come to Grimsby. Excellent. I hope they pass that message back to the rest of Europe. Uh, si, sí, muy bueno. Uh, another health story, uh, also a wildlife story. Here we are. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a mixture of, uh, of medicine and David Attenborough. What's going on with these caterpillars? Well, interestingly, there's been uh, a report around um, some hairy caterpillars that uh, are in Thorpe Park, and they're um, something to do with the brown-tailed moth. So they must be the young of the brown-tailed brown moth, um, which, when they become moths, won't create a problem. However, as caterpillars, it, they, um, the report says they would be quite dangerous and uh, um, can uh, cause health issues and respiratory issues, so breathing problems for anybody who goes too near the nest or touches them. These are the, the little spiny hairs that come out and they get right. caught in your lungs. Or That's right, that yes. Right so um, one of the services we have at uh, Grimsby Hospital is a, 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 an emergency care centre and if patients were presenting with something, uh, signs and symptoms uh, that were quite unusual, this would be of interest to my clinicians uh, as part of their uh, opportunities and understanding to diagnose. Um, so if people had been near the, this, these um, caterpillars, it would be good for them to tell the, uh, the clinicians. Uh, and are these uh, new residents uh, in this region, these moths or these, these caterpillars, are these incomers or are they, they've always been here, this is a seasonal problem? Uh, I don't they, think the I, report I, says. I, th I think, I think they've, uh, they've come over, they're, they're a new phenomenon. Right? They're, all right, they're, right. They're, they're I'd, I'd missed that bit in the report, oh, but no, sorry. That's all right. And finally, you've got a, a story about a football story where you have a personal connection. Yes, yes, I'm uh, very pleased that uh, Scunthorpe United have, uh, have gained promotion up to uh, League One this season. The third tier of English football. Absolutely. Absolutely. And your connection is but then they may be going up again. You never know next season. Um, Brian Law started the season as the manager and uh, was uh, promptly sacked, I'm afraid. Uh, but Russ Wilcox, the uh, the deputy manager, took took charge. And you know him because. And I know Russ because I play netball with his wife Rachel. Everybody uh, knows everybody else. <laughs> yes, it's Going a to small have to world. stop you there, Colette. That's all we have time for. If you've a story for us, please email uh, news at estuary.tv or contact us via our Twitter or Facebook pages or pick up the phone and call 01472 315561. Until tomorrow, goodbye.